흩어진 제자들. Scattered disciples. 지금 그 70인이 가질 힘. It is the message is titled "The Power the Seventy Workers Must Have First." 누가 보면 십장 십칠 절에서 이십 절. It is from Luke chapter ten, verses seventeen through twenty. 아, 전도 제자들은 꼭 기억해야 됩니다. Evangelism disciples must remember this. 눈에 안 보이는 힘입니다. It is the power that is invisible to our eyes. 영어로는 test. In English, it's called tacit power. It is unseen to our eyes. 이걸 보고 영적인 힘이라고 합니다. We call this the spiritual power. 영적인 힘이 생기면 세계 살리는 눈이 열려요. If you have the spiritual power, you will have your eyes open to save the world. We call it the intellectual power. If you have the spiritual power as well as the intellectual power, physical power will follow. If you have these three, then Financial power will also follow. It's not that you're pursuing after money. All the finances will follow after you. Then you will also have the manpower by which you will raise up 10 million disciples. And as I pray for this, there's a word that I attach to the spiritual power. God grant to me your spiritual strength. 그래서 이제 에, 나는 보통 이렇게 호흡하면서요. 들이쉴 때 영적인 힘. As I inhale, as I breathe, I pray for the spiritual strength, spiritual power. 그리고 이 영적인 힘은 내 속에 이마도록 이렇게 늘 기도. I always pray so that the spiritual power will be upon within me. And as I pray for intellectual power, I pray to God to grant to me His message. I do this through breathing and prayer. 체력은 뭐 내가 혼자 웃기는 기도인데. So regarding. 불신자 앞에 내가 간증할 수 있을 정도로요. Regarding physical power is quite uh, funny. I actually pray to the extent that I can actually testify to unbelievers. 그때 나와서 기도와 오직 그리스도. That's when I pray only prayer. It is only Christ. 그때 와서 내가 기도하는 방법을 간증하려고. That's when I will testify my method of prayer. 여러분 다. I pray that may all of you be able to do the same. Let's say that all the pastors here that they can go evangelizing for uh, until they are 100 years old. Then all these you know, press will come to interview you asking, how can you still be so healthy and evangelize? That's when you will tell. Only Christ. 안정돼요. 그래 증거 있잖아요. 오직 그리스도. Really, it will be a testimony. You will be able to testify only Christ. 경제력을. Financial power. 전 세계 RTC 세울 수 있도록. To the extent that I can raise RTC all across the world. RTC 증거 여러분 계속 하고 있던데요. 감사하고. You are giving the RUTC offering, and I'm very thankful for that until the day that we establish RUTC all around the world. This is my prayer. Regarding manpower, 10 million disciples. And it's within all this prayer. If I possess this power, then I don't need anything else. 
All of you scattered disciples continue with this prayer. What is your start? As you continue with this prayer, there's something that you must do. It is the correct, accurate covenant. It's grabbing onto the accurate covenant that is your start. And a very important strength that God provides to you. With five powers, you must save people. And there is a separate, a different power, strength that God gives to you. And as you raise up these 70 workers so that they can go and reproduce, this is what you will continue to make. And of course, it's good to go to China. However, it's important that those people there can raise up the 70 worker movement. That's actually what God desires. Going to Africa is important, but the disciples already in Africa, that they themselves can carry out the 70 worker movement. That's why I change your prayer starting from today so that all the disciples in Japan can raise up the 70 worker movement. So what is this accurate, correct covenant? It is finished, John 19.30. What does it mean that it is all finished? It means that now it's a start. Now it's a start because everything is already finished. Even though it is all finished, why is it so hard for me? That is your start. This is what you must remember. And also, you must hold to this accurate covenant. It is the last, final pulpit. It is only Christ, God's kingdom, and the Holy Spirit. And you see the mystery of the triune God. And also the work pertaining to God's kingdom. That's what you need to grab hold of. What does it mean that you're grabbing onto the accurate covenant? It means that you don't need anything else. Then answers will come. When you say that you, uh, you don't need anything else, it means that all other things are useless. Um, it does not mean that, however, it's not that you don't need them anymore. And ultimately, Acts 2, 1 through 4, 47, that's Mark's upper room. That is a covenant. You need to hold to the accurate covenant. And what strength are we talking about here? Look at Luke 10, 19, carefully. So this is what's recorded in Luke 10, 19. I have given you the authority to trample on snakes and scorpions and to overcome all the power of the enemy. Nothing will harm you. So the first part is about the strength, the power that God has given to you within you. However, it's a separate strength that we're talking about in Luke 10, 19. And also Acts 2, 9 through 11. God will bring forth all those who are scattered. And he will bring them to you and you must have this strength. And this is the strength that God will give to you to gather those who are scattered. And also, it's Acts chapter 2, verse 41. 3,000 disciples arose. If you can properly raise up the 70 disciples, then 3,000 disciples are bound to rise. That's why starting from today, you must hone, prepare your vessel to raise up 3,000 disciples. And ultimately, it is Acts 11, 19. 
What is this? At the time of crisis, they were able to make the greatest turning point at the time of crisis. In Acts 13.1, the most accurate mission started. Which means that God had no choice but to pour down His tremendous strength. What's more important is this reproduction. And in Acts 13.12, you see that the proconsul was greatly blessed. And also Acts 14, 14 through 20 is Timothy. Such individuals will arise. And you know, you know the content of Acts 16, especially? When such disciples arose, that's why reproduction movement continued to take place. And ultimately, 17, Acts 17.1 to the synagogue. And in 17.3, and they also testify the imperativeness of Christ. And also, verse 6, we see Jason. And when such people arise, then world evangelization will take place. It does not require many people within your church, within the, all the scattered disciples. If the true disciples are arise, all the works will take place. So instead of the church, even if there are 10,000 fake disciples, it's of no, no use. And even if with just two true disciples, the church will be revived. All the scattered disciples throughout all the regions, you must hold on to this as your covenant. So as long as you're not deceived, all the answers will continue to come. It's an undoubted fact. And it did not end with this. What is it? To the synagogue. Ultimately, they penetrated to the remnants. Just a few number of true disciples changed the world. Really count the number of the people of Roman chapter 16. These people saved Rome. It's not about a number of people. Even if it's just only you, one person, if you have this covenant, God is going to pour all the answers to you. That's why all of you scattered disciples do not be discouraged. All of you pastors do not fall into despair. And all of you missionaries, all scattered around the world, do not be in despair. When I say do not be in despair, it means that just boldly only hold to the covenant. In some sense, actually completely change your mindset. Now hold to the, this a prayer that I'm, I don't need any help, I will help other people. I will actually commission out all these missionaries to all the other remote areas. Even if you don't have that strength, you need to pray correctly. Let's say that you don't have strength, but even if, even also your prayer is incorrect, what's going to happen? Even when you have a strength, but if your prayer is incorrect, do you know what's going to happen? In other words, you need to hold to the covenant correctly. Then go provide to you this invisible passive power. Even right now, amazingly, God is fulfilling His kingdom. 
Why? This is God, uh, Jesus' promise. Jesus explained for 40 days the works pertaining to God's kingdom. God, you are holding on to the covenant right here, and God is working upon all the fields that are related to you. I firmly believe in this. Because that's what's been happening, and going forward, that's what's going to happen. God's work of his kingdom will be fulfilled through you. Let us pray. Lord God, would you work upon all the scattered disciples at this time? Would you work upon them by the power of your throne and mobilize your heavenly host? And right now, bind all the force of darkness. May all the force of darkness that hinder the church kneel down at this time. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen.